Let's talk about protective styles and how your twist outs, some of your wash and goes, and some of your natural styles are nothing close to a protective style. One of my favorite protective styles is a sew-in, but if you do a sew-in wrong, they could be nowhere near protective either. Here in this video, you can see multiple black women with beautiful, thick, and luscious hair, and they get sew-ins. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada. It is the desert. There's a literally tumbleweed rolling around. And my clients in a hundred degree weather with their healthy hair, they would sweat and all of those things. And for us to make sure that we are able to keep up with their natural hair growth cycle without causing breakage, we would always do sew-ins. Now, if you put a sew-in wrong, if you put it in wrong, absolutely it's going to be damaging. It can cause traction, alopecia, and so many different things. But as you can see, this beauty here, beautiful, thick, long hair, but all of it is up. All of it is up. This next beauty that you're going to look at right now, this is all her hair. Every last drop. But she would always come in and get a full sew in with a natural part because she did not want to deal with her hair on a regular basis. The funny thing about YouTube is it gets you under the misconceived notion that women with long hair are constantly in their hair doing all of these wash and goes and twist outs and things of that nature. But the truth of the matter is most women with long, thick, healthy hair are trying to be in their hair the least amount of time as they possibly can. They have set patterns and set routines that make it so their hair is always thriving and they're never having scalp inflammation because a woman with really really long hair and long healthy hair and a healthy scalp knows that the key to doing that is keeping the scalp clean and staying out of your head being in your head for hours and hours and hours at a time is only going to cause breakage right but right now we are at one of my clients who was at the beginning of her hair growth process right we are resetting her hair growth cycle and even though you may see her ends of what looks like breakage but the reality of it is if you've had previous bald spots right and then you begin to grow hair back obviously the hair that was not balding is still there and those pieces may be longer than the newer hair that's coming in so the way that my clients would make sure that they were able to retain length while allowing their hair to heal right was to get a sew-in so before i put the sew-in in they would get a haircut getting all of the damage off now having a line of demarcation the way that i just explained and a line for, of demarcation from breakage are two completely different things her lines of demarcation are not from breakage right we are growing her hair back sometimes sometimes depending on the rate in which your hair grows sometimes it can catch up a little bit and you can put the hair in layers but when you are at this stage of growing it out sometimes you just want to let your hair do its thing and getting a sew-in is the easiest way to do it now across social media they make you believe that as soon as you put a sew-in in what you have to do is add oil and grease to every piece of the hair listen YouTube taught y'all that hairstyling and doing hair is adding a whole bunch of products. But as you can see, you do not see oils and greases and butters and things of that nature in her hair. If I don't tell you what products I'm using, you would never know because you never see any type of white cast, any type of oily cast, any trace of a product on my client's hair, right? Products are supposed to be something that is like, Un uh, unseen like you don't know it's there it's like this secret helper when you have hair products hair products are supposed to be an illusion it's supposed to make the person who's doing hair whether it's the hairstylist or you hair products are supposed to make you look amazing you're not supposed to see traces of hair products right they're just supposed to be able to aid you and that's what we're doing here 
what you guys have been seeing on the screen are different reviews from either inside of the seven day challenge or from inside of simple apothecary this review that you're seeing right now is from simple apothecary someone who was following a lot of tame natural hacks with oils and butters and greases and things of that nature her daughter ended up suffering from alopecia and after her taking our bulldog blue she ended up being able to reverse the alopecia reverse the balding that her daughter was experiencing right make sure you check all the videos in the description box below so you can learn more about the products within the apothecary and be sure to pause this video as you're watching take screenshots so that way you are able to see the reviews from people within the seven day challenge i know that it's something that i talk about all the time and then in some videos i don't mention it at all but i need you guys to know that the things that i talk about as it pertains to resetting the hair growth cycle and not following team natural practices I've been talking about on this channel for a very long time and over the years we all know people steal your intellectual property or people make videos and like oh this is false information so so we can have a learning experience free from chatter free from debate and free from all of the craziness right I have everything on my private platform. So again, as you're seeing the different reviews from the people within the seven day challenge, just know that at any time, all you have to do is click the link in the description box below, join my seven day challenge. And guess what? You can do it for as little as $25, but I need you guys to understand that my seven day challenge makes you equipped, right? It is self-paced, it's self-learning. As soon as you purchase, right? Make sure the email that you use, you have access to because the second that you purchase, you're gonna get a receipt. And once you get a receipt, follow the steps on the email it opens up immediately right join the group you join the group automatically as long as when you um sign up and create your profile you make it a public profile as long as you have a public profile you will be added to the seven day challenge immediately right but even if something that you the seven day challenge is something that you don't necessarily want to do right now you guys i have so many videos and here on the screen you can see so many people talking about the hair products that i recommend and this is the thing over the last 12 years people have been told and black people have been telling each other that the hair industry doesn't have any products for black women black women don't have shampoo and conditioners and we need their our own products and the thing is we fight so hard right not to be separated not to be singled out right we fight so hard to be equal and for equality and once we get the equality once we're equal now we're fighting for more separation right we're all equal we all have amazing hair products within you know cosmoprof or professional products that you can get easily on amazon we all have it we have the unity guys we have it but now we want to be separate with hair products that have oils and butters and things of that nature in it now if we go back if we just go back and we look at the schedule right and we look at the time frames before all of this folliculitis all of the seborrheic dermatitis all of the ccca and all of the different scalp issues that women are dealing with now they were not dealing with it before back then all we really had was dandruff and that came from people greasing the scalp but now the state that the follicle and the hair shaft is in is wild to the point that some dermatologists have witnessed some forms of bacteria and yeast within the follicle after skin biopsies after scalp biopsies guys these doctors don't even have anything to treat the forms of bacteria that you guys have formed for mixing all of these products your apple cider vinegar growing uh different parasites and bacterias when you're fermenting the rice in your house like there are just so many different things and the sad thing about it is 
people will you will try one thing on youtube and you think that just because you tried it one time and that's it that your hair is safe where in reality all it takes is one time for you to get a massive follicle infection and if you try things and you only shampoo your hair every blue moon or you're only using co-washing conditioners and things of that nature the chances of you being able to reverse the things that you've done are really slim to nothing so it's crazy because we have made sew-ins and hair extensions the devil where in reality the problem that we really really have is the way that we prepare our hair right you see certain videos everybody's so scared of blow dryers right so they say okay before i put braids in i'm not gonna blow dry my hair i'm just gonna air dry it and i'm not gonna use a comb or a brush i'm just gonna finger detangle before i put the braids in and then you have these braids or these twists or whatever you put in your head in and then you also wash your hair with these things in so then over time you take it out you have a bunch of matting, you have a bunch of tangling and all of the things, right? Because your hair wasn't properly prepared and then you take it out and you blame it on the braiding hair. You say, oh, this braiding hair, the braiding hair is toxic. Even though you've been covering the scalp in oil and grease and butter, you've been saturating the scalp in oils with that braiding hair in, feeding the bacteria, causing the bacteria that lives on the scalp to colonize, right? Making all of those parasites, those Demodex parasites, you feeding them with the oils and the butters, and then you end up causing the follicles to die. So you get all of the shedding, all of the breakage, right? But then when you take the braids out, you don't blame your patterns or your routines you blame the braiding hair because the braiding hair is so toxic even though prior to all of these things all of the things that the balding and things that women are dealing with they were using the same braiding hair now today it's really toxic but we don't look at any of our patterns and any of our routines it is the lack of accountability that women with naturally curly hair have and if we are accountable we can sit down we can look at our patterns and see how the things that we've done right the things that we've made our regular patterns are actually the things that are slowing us down and are actually the things that are causing the scalp inflammation in my very next video my very next talking head video i'm going to show you guys like more even more about your twist outs and i'm going to show you even more because some of the women who started the whole not twist out i keep saying twist uh twist out i just mean twist period some of the women who started the whole twist craze they're now coming out and saying my hair is damaged it's falling out they're cutting all of their hair and they're blaming the braiding hair right or they're blaming combs and brushes but nobody's blaming the patterns right the the patterns that have led to the hair weathering over years and here on my channel, we talk about hair weathering on a regular basis. But when I first started talking about hair weathering about 10 years ago, because people hadn't started seeing the evidence of the weathering, it was like, oh, she's making it up. She doesn't know what she's talking about because they wanted you to keep buying the products and you kept buying the products. And now before, when I first started talking about hair weathering, it was about maybe about 20% of women were dealing with weathering. And now today in 2024, it's a good 85% of women with naturally curly hair that are dealing with the weathering, okay? But if you switch over and you throw away all of these team natural products, all of these oils, these butters, these greases that you are slathering your hair with, I can guarantee you, you'll have healthy hair. And it's crazy because when people join my seven day challenge or when people, you know, take their barrier of offense off and they're able to just hear me and hear what I'm saying and they just simply stop using the things that they've been using, you don't have to throw them away. Just just put them over there in a corner for a minute. Just put them over there in a the corner for a minute and then go get some real life professional shampoo and use it sparingly. Don't pack it on your hair. Don't smother it on your hair. Just have really simplistic patterns and watch your hair feel better than it's ever felt. There's a reason why if you go to a good cosmetologist and I know it's a bunch of dusty ones out there. I know I get it. 
But if you go to an excellent cosmetologist, a real good one like myself, <laughs> you'll notice like most of my clients will always say like, oh my God, like how does my hair feel this good? Like, I don't know. I'm no matter what I put on my hair, I'm never able to make my hair feel the way that you do. You know why? I don't put anything on your hair. The things, the products that I use are only there to make it easier for me to do my job. It makes it easier for me to comb your hair and it makes it easier and safer for me to blow dry your hair by using a very lightweight leave-in conditioner that is not going to cause any buildup on the scalp or the hair shaft. It's just going to give me the heat protection and the environmental protection that I need and then we're good, right? And all of the steps that I'm using are literally just to prepare the hair. Her scalp is not saturated in oil. All I did was shampoo, condition shampoo and condition her hair then I sprayed a leave-in conditioner on blow dried her hair and as I was braiding I had literally just a little bit of shea butter mixed with mango butter um on my hands right emulsify on my fingertips a very little bit you never saw any white you never saw any shininess nothing it's literally just enough for her braids to lay the way that I want them to lay. Doing hair has nothing to do with hair products. And as a licensed cosmetologist, most licensed cosmetologists that are really about their craft take it offensively that people think that the way that we're able to do our job or create the art that we are able to create is based on hair products. Hair products have nothing to do with the artistry of hair care absolutely nothing and if it has nothing to do with the artistry of hair care it definitely has nothing to do with the way that God set the human body up to make it through all different phases of your hair growth cycle so I did not use a net on her hair because she does have a high sebum level and I don't want her scalp to become inflamed. She came to see me every three weeks for maintenance for her, for this sew-in. And then in between, she had a regimen for her own hair that she would use if she went to the gym, if she worked out or anything like that, right? There was a whole regimen. It's not just, oh, I put a sew-in in and that. That's it. And another reason, right, that we all are always in negative spaces is because we're always looking for shortcuts, right? Look at this comment here on the screen, right? And we had a really good conversation. And at the end of the conversation, it's like love. You have to really do real self-love and real self-care on your hair. Black women are always the target number one in the hair care industry because the hair care industry knows that you're looking for one thing and one thing only. You're not looking for something that's going to give you healthy hair. You're not looking for something that's going to help your hair grow longer. You're looking for ease. You're looking for something that's going to be fast and easy. And that's how the whole Revere blow dryer has been able to make thousands upon thousands millions of dollars off of black women just from their lack of accountability and just from you not wanting to be bothered with your hair because you got to think about it why would your hair be thriving why would your hair be thriving when all you do is look for ways to be in your hair less time to say, and I know a lot of people aren't going to like what I have to say next, but people are in love with the Revere blow dryer because it cuts time down. But when you think about it, girl, like you have nothing but time. Most women on the face of the earth who are not necessarily of African descent that have hair down their back, they're washing and blow drying their hair sometimes every single day. So I'm sorry. Yes, your hair may be super thick and super curly, but if your hair is super thick and super curly and it's 10 inches long, you have no comparison or no room to talk to a woman whose hair is 25, 28 inches long and she's washing and shampooing and blow drying. I'm washing and shampoo is the same thing. Shampooing and conditioning and blow drying and styling her hair every single day before she goes to work. You only have to do it once a week. So it's crazy.
it's crazy so in part two well technically this will be like part three i'm going to have different options and i know i'll have a bunch of people in the comments who will have something to say but it doesn't matter because i'm just gonna screenshot them and you're gonna be the example that i use in the next video because you have so many options you don't just have to wear your hair straight even though that's what a lot of my beauties in the seven day challenge end up choosing and they end up choosing Using it because most of the women in the seven day challenge were in team natural gel for like 10 years and they were made to believe that if they wore their hair straight or if they blow dried their hair then all of it will fall out so most women get in the seven day challenge and learn how to straighten their hair safely they see their curls revert back and look even stronger and i can't get them to stop straightening their hair if i wanted to but <laughs> it's cool because there are different options you have so many other options other than flat twists and rollers and girl that's coming in the next video and i'll show you but again on the screen you are seeing so many people from inside of the seven day challenge who don't need oil or grease of any way shape or form because they're noticing sebum coming out of their scalp it is a myth black women do not need to oil and grease and butter their scalps you don't need oil and grease and butter on your hair now if you're doing a protective style like a sew-in if you're doing a protective style like some um twist right let's say passion twist because doing passion twists and doing two strand twists on your hair are two completely different things doing two strand twists i don't care how emotionally attached you guys are to them two strand twists are not protective styles for something to be a protective style it needs to be either protecting the scalp or the ends and two strand twists protect neither the scalp or the ends your ends are never more exposed and the scalp is never more exposed than it is when your hair is in two strand twists okay so there's absolutely nothing protective about them however if you were to add a little bit of hair and do like passion twists as long as you don't keep them in for too long the actual braiding hair protects the protects the ends right because the extension hair will go past your ends and twist them within each other but see the breakage happens when you have the braids in for two three months and you like i want to make this last another two months and then you are washing it all the time letting the passion twist air dry you break the bonds you cause the hair to swell and now instead of the hair being where the braider put it twisted up under the braiding hair now you have caused the hair to swell it comes out and then it gets tangled with the braiding hair especially if you're a person who never combs their hair right in the first place especially if you're a person who just stretched your hair and didn't blow dry it to put the twist in in the first place you cause the hair to mat just because you have hair extensions in does not mean that you won't cause it to mat not to mention a twist and a braid are very different the way that you can wash your hair in box braids and the way that you can wash your hair in passion twist are very different because the level of tension that you have with the twist is very very minute when compared to the level of tension that you have with the braid so it is not the same thing and if you're constantly washing it you will get matting and tangling again stay tuned for the next video because i'm going to give you an example of that as well as an example of another side of youtube of black women older black women with beautiful thick healthy hair and i'm purposely going to the side of youtube with older black women with healthy hair and i'm talking older older black women like women old enough to be my mother because you guys following girls that just got out of high school that's covering their hair in oils and butters and grease it's very very unrealistic because to think that your body operates the same way in your 20s as it does in your 50s girl is crazy okay your eggs don't even work the same at 60 as they do at 20 baby it's different okay but anywho we'll get into that in my next video but i just want you guys to know that whenever we're doing sew-ins and things of that nature it's not because oh you don't love yourself and you're trying to be somebody else or you don't like your hair no some people 
it's a protective style. It's their version of a protective style. And it's not to say anything bad about anyone, but braids and twists and afros and team natural styles are not for everybody. It's not every woman's look. It's not every woman's. It's not. It's just not. It's just not a thing for everybody. And you shouldn't feel like you're in bondage, like you only are able to wear your hair one way because if you wear your hair any different then you don't love yourself every woman on the face of this earth washes their hair blow dries it and the way that their hair naturally looks from wet to dry is is altered and changed putting curls in your hair putting crimps in your hair doing roller sets there are so many different options you guys and you shouldn't be in bondage about any of them sew-ins are not damaging in any way shape or form unless you put them in wrong or you leave it in too long but sew-ins are a really really good protective style and it's a really really good um placeholder like let's say again you're growing your hair out and let's say you're used to having really long and thick hair and you doing a big chop or you cutting off the damage is a lot for you because you just don't want to see your hair short like that extensions are always a really good option or a sew-in is always a really really good option and again as long as it's put in properly it makes your hair grow right and not that it makes your hair grow i shouldn't say that it makes it so you could retain length because the reason that most people can't retain length is because as their hair grows they're in their head putting all of these products in detangling their hair with conditioner and grabbing globs and globs of their hair in their hand when they're done so as the hair grows out you're not able to retain the length because your patterns and your routine cause breakage and the follicle damage over the years so i really hope that this video made a little bit of sense as it pretends as it pretends as it pertains to sew-ins as protective styles and more on what are classified as protective styles again if your ends are not wrapped or protected or if your scalp is not protected baby it's not a protective style it's just a style but it's not protective you can't make something a protective style just because you just because you think it's black like something that only the majority of black women wear it just it doesn't make it a protective style just because it's your favorite thing to do it doesn't protect the hair in any way shape or form it actually makes it easier for the hair to mat so yeah let me know what you guys think about this video i have a bunch of sewing videos left so let me know if you want me to show you another one you know what i'm saying or if you want me to show you like hers like a recap of hers and where she was at her length with her length whenever i stopped doing her hair well, not stopped doing her hair but when i retired but anywho let me know what you think about her hair in this video leave me some comments below about what you think and we will talk about everybody's comments in the next video all right i love you guys so much she was literally one of my favorite clients like beautiful inside and out like beautiful woman inside and out love her okay let me know what you think bye